Hi, this is Natika Parker, and I am going to show you how to use conditional formatting in Google Sheets. Starting off, I'm going to show you the different ways to access Google Sheets. Um, one way is if you open up a new tab, you can type in your search bar sheets.new and press enter and that will open up a new Google Sheets for you. Or you could go over to your waffle here for your Google Apps and select Sheets. And then of course, after that, you press blank um, and it'll start a new sheet for you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and title this um, Google Sheet as in Spanish. And I'm going to create this little quick check for students. I'm going to select this first cell here and I will drag it out to select more. And I'm going to go up to um, my format toolbar. I'm going to choose text wrapping and just make sure that, that that wrap is selected. Also, I am going to stay up here in my format toolbar and I'm going to click Merge Cells. So as you see, whenever I clicked on Merge Cells, instead of having 16 um, cells that I had selected, they all merged into one large one. This is going to be where I'm going to type my directions for this activity. Okay, so, after I type my directions and click off of it into another cell, you can see here that um, my direction box, um, the text in it is a little small, so you can click back into it and you can, of course, enlarge it. Um, and you can also change the font. I personally like Ubuntu, so I'm gonna click on that. Also, a cool thing is um, notice when I click when I clicked off of it earlier, it all is just kind of like pushed down to the bottom. So if you go back up to your format bar and you click vertical align, um, this little alignment tool, you can change it to just be more centered. So like for it to look like that as well. But that's just a pers personal preference for me. Now I am just going to create these columns. And now that I'm thinking about it, I kind of want these um, to be blended or at least larger. So I what I can do is I can select this column B right here, and I can completely delete this column. Um, and notice what it did whenever I deleted that column, it didn't get rid of my directions, and it didn't get rid of what I had written for my Spanish and my English terms. Now what I'm going to do is I want my um, columns here to be larger. So I'm going to select my A column here and I'm going to hold down my control key and also select B since I will only really need these two columns. And now that they're selected, I can go to any of these lines here and pull and resize these columns. And that does that to both columns, so I don't have to worry about like clicking and dragging and trying to see if they are actually the same size or not. Um, also, I guess I didn't think too far ahead of this. I don't really need this column either, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And then now I have really what I need. You could go here to select all of these cells in your spreadsheet. And again, um, if you did that, you could change the size of your rows. You could change the size of your columns and they all will end up looking like that whenever you do that. You can even change
change the font to all look the same. So all the things that I did earlier where I did like text wrapping and changing the alignment. Spanish and English don't have enough space here, so I'm going to change those. So now I am going to fill in these words in Spanish. Gonna center those. Okay, so now here comes the format, the formatting. Um, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to click underneath my English column. Let me center these as well. I'm going to click under my English column um, right next to the word that means onion. And I am going to go to Format and Conditional Formatting. And it's going to open up this little menu for me. And so let's say you want to do B6 to B13. You can do that. Um, and it'll select all of them. And so let's say if text. is empty, then let's say you can turn it to be, turn it, turn these to be yellow. And so what that does is because these cells are empty, they have been changed to uh, a yellow background. And then you could do done. I'm going to add another rule here. And I'm only going to have B6 selected this time because this is where it gets like really important. So I'm going to say format rules, text contains, and then underneath that, it's going to open up a value or formula and, um, underneath the text contains bar now. And I'm going to type the word onion here because that is the word that needs to go here in order for the students to get it correct. And so by default, it will turn this green and you can change it to whatever green you want, whatever color you want. You could customize the colors down here. Um, I am just going to keep the theme of these kind of like pastel -y colors going, I guess. Um, and I won't change this green, but if you would like to, you could. And then I will scroll down and do done. Then I'm going to add another rule and you do not have to do this, but I always like to because it's easier for the students to be able to see um, if they need to change anything. So again, B6 is selected. I'm going to underneath uh, format cells if I'm going to open this, this drop down menu again and I'm going to do if text does not contain type onion again. And now with my does not contain, I'm going to change that background. Hold on. I'm going to change that background color. So hit this paint bucket and I'm going to turn it red. So now that I've done that, notice that the cell B6 is empty, which means that it needs to be worked on. If I type in the word onion and I click off, then it turns green. If I go back and get rid of it, it automatically goes back to being yellow because it's empty again. But let's say that I think that this means potato. When I click off of it, it turns red. And this is a quick way for students to just kind of check themselves and see if they have their answers correct or incorrect. Um, so that yellow is just letting them know, okay, it's empty, it needs to be worked on. You type in your word. If it's correct, it will turn green. If not, it's going to turn red. And we can do that for all of these other words. So I'm gonna show you that again. I'm going to go 
to B7. So click B7, format up here in the toolbar, conditional formatting. Remember that we already selected this whole range from B6 to B13 to remain yellow as long as the cell is empty. So we don't have to do that again. We're going to add another rule. We're going to go underneath the format cells if, and we're going to do text contains. We are going to type for this one, potato, and we do want it to go green. I'm going to add another rule, hit this tool, uh, this drop down menu again. If text does not contain potato, we are going to turn this red. So let's say they think that this word means onion. When we click off of it, it turns red. That's the red flag. They know that they need to go back and change it. Okay. And you may be wondering if it matters how they type the words, like do um, uppercase and lowercase letters matter? No, they don't. I can type O, capital O, lowercase n, capital I, O, N, and it will still turn green. So that is how you do conditional formatting to do quick checks with your students. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.